All right. I'm going to give you guys just a second longer um, to get connected. Katie just put the class code in the chat. It's 979-887 if you need it. I was in a call the other day with like the powers behind our software and they were making jokes about changing my code on me. And I was no devastated and like, stop, don't say that. <laughs> I need to like take a week off and recover. You cannot change my code. I know it by heart. <laughs> anyway, um, so a lot of fun pulling this lesson together. So the couple of things that I wanted to do here, number one, I wanted to call your attention to some great resources that are live um, in product right now that come from um, a collaboration between us at SMART and a group called Glue. And so I've pulled out um, some of their lesson to kind of kick off the explicit SEL skills practice. And then I'm going to pull that into an ELA lesson where we really take the content of the novel and weave this idea of, an, of identity and image through it, connecting both to the characters in the book and then getting our students to reflect on themselves as well. So we start to build those connections and move them kind of between exploring themselves and exploring characters in the literature that we're reading. All right, I got quite a few people in here. So let's get going um and again like these first couple pages these are right now there's eight at least lessons katie are there more than eight in the content library we have eight lessons uh that our friends at glue created we also have another area of resources all around emotional literacy as well so there's lots of different options available in the lumio explore resources library today Yep, and all of them ready to go, which is really nice because I just, um, the way Glue has set this up is they've got, so there's a longer lesson on identity and image in there. And they've set these up so you can do the entire lesson. So it kind of makes sense end to end. But if you just want to grab a piece of it, which is what I did and fit it into your, your content in a different way, they're set up to do that as well. So really, really easy to work with. So this one kind of kicks us off with a true or false statement. And so I like this because I just want to get my kids kind of thinking big picture about, you know, what's happening around them. And if you guys want to answer this question, you may. But this is just really getting them think about their world and social media and what does it mean to have a lot of friends and how is that connected to social media? So I really just like this because it gets them thinking. And in my class, we would answer this. And then I would pull this into a discussion so we could kind of talk about that. Like, what is a friend and what makes a friend and what, are, what happens on social media and what are we doing there and what are we helping to, hoping to accomplish? And so I love this. Like, I love this question. It's just a great way to get my students thinking about identity and image and how we share that with others and how we perceive it on our own. And so from there, um, I can show results in here. Let's see what you guys said. Yep. Um, well, I want to move into kind of creating a list of positive characteristics. And so we just, we kicked off with like, what is a friend? What do we see from social media? But what is it about people that we really want to celebrate? And so this is an activity that just grabs one of our brainstorming webs. And this I would do, depending on the size of my class and the age of my kids, I can do as a whole class or I can do as smaller groups. Um, Ideally, we kind of do it as a whole class and um, we just start to brainstorm, like what are those characteristics that are worth celebrating? And this is where we talked about a little bit earlier, you know, how you share is very individual. And what I like about a lot of these activities in Lumio is you can type, so we've got loyalty appearing here, but you can also grab an image if that's easier or makes more sense to you or that's how you think. Um, and you can annotate in there as well. So lots of different ways for students to just start to brainstorm. And so we just kind of open this up. We do this in really kind of an anonymous way. If we take enough time with this, which we're not going to do today because this is a really long lesson. I got a little excited. <laughs> we have a lot to share, but then we can start to kind of go in and organize those and move those things around. And I love, you know, when students start to include pictures and then we can talk about what that means to them or what that feels like, because a lot of this conversation is around like labeling, but that means you have to know the words and you have to know the labels, but you also know how you feel and what actions or characteristics people have and how that influences you. And I think pictures kind of help us have that conversation. So from this whole class activity, we're gonna move into just a personal reflection. And so we've kind of got this diamond ranking. And what would be really important to do here is, um, I'm, 
well, I'll go ahead and do this because you guys can play around a little bit, um, is turn this into student pacing. Because what I want my students to do is look back at the brainstorming web that we just did. And then in their own individual handout, they're going to pick some of those characteristics and rank them from most important to least important for them. And so I've just taken exactly what's here and that's gonna appear in a handout. But because I've got this in student pacing, they can kind of go back and forth. We obviously, they're not gonna remember all of the things we just brainstormed. So I want them to be able to move um, through my lesson and grab the pieces that they need. This honestly could be a healthy chunk of a lesson. There's a lot that we've got happening today. So this is something that could be chunked up, but this has now got us thinking about characteristics, what makes a person that we you know, want to celebrate or that we look up to or that we value, what are those characteristics? And from there, we're going to kind of pull this into the novel that we've been reading. Um, and I picked Fish in a Tree for this one because I, I really like this book, number one. But also um, it's a great place to kind of explore identity and image and how we see ourselves as well as how we see others. And so moving into the book, I'm gonna carry through some of the same questions that we just started when we were talking about identity as a whole. And so I'm going to give my students, you know, three questions to really think about throughout this. So how does a person's identity impact how others perceive them? How does it impact how they perceive themselves? And how can we be sensitive to differences in others? So here, we're really starting to pull in some of those SEL skills as well, right? Like we're identifying characteristics, we're thinking about relationships, we're starting to understand empathy, and we're really understanding how to kind of manage this in, in a social group and build that social awareness. And so kind of kick that off. Great way to get students to tell me what they think is to use a shout it out and just get there like right now, we've just started exploring this topic. What do you think? And really open-ended, just let them answer through shout it out. Again, if you've played with shout it out before, we can start to organize things. We can come back to this later and kind of revisit it as, as the topic develops for us. And so once we've done that, I love this quote, I've used it <laughs> as a quote in SEL lessons before, but this appears in the book and I really want them to kind of explore this. So I give them the quote, we'll do a little bit of whole class discussion about it. And then I want them to answer that. And to do that, um, I would turn this into a handout for them. And if you haven't done this in Lumio before, I'm just gonna click here, turn it into an individual handout and then pass it out to my students. And then that's something that you know I really like kind of thinking about as my students are working on this, I can see what the individual students are contributing and we can turn this into a conversation. And again, we can start to kind of explore our similarities and our differences in how we interpret this and start to learn from each other. And again, build that kind of safe space um, and practice those protocols for discussing where everyone has a voice and everyone shares. So from there, we're gonna dive into some character analysis. So we've done a lot of group talking and now I've kind of stacked a number of handouts in here because I want my students to start to kind of do a little bit of thinking on their own. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of take that thread from the quote on you know individual genius, individual greatness, and start to have them look at some of the characters in the book pull out what their individual genius is, right? Because they all have very different ones. And I've included, I've included the teacher and kind of that key friend group in there to get them to explore some different pieces and then just start to map those characteristics. So we were talking about characteristics. We were reflecting a little bit on relationships before we got into the book. And here's where they can start to list some of those out. And then I want to turn this kind of um, a little bit of introspection for my students. And this is an activity that I love to do to bring a little bit of SEL into my lesson is I'm going to have my students compare themselves to a character. So which character do you relate to the most and how are you similar and different? Because I want to move between analyzing the book which is sometimes easier because we're looking at different characters, but then doing that introspection and building some of that SEL and thinking about ourselves. And at the same time, you know, it's giving me some insight into my students and helping me understand their, you know, individual greatness as well as they do that introspection. 
So once they've done that, I'm going to get them to do some group writing. So I'm kind of like pulling the thread through this. We're talking about, you know, characteristics that, you know, really are things that we celebrate in different people. We're looking at like the genius and the characteristics that we're celebrating in this book. And then we're going to talk a little bit about heroes. There's definitely plenty of heroes in the story. And so um, I want my students to start to identify like who do they see as a hero and what makes them a hero? And I like to use this group writing because my students are just going to take turns adding onto a sentence. They're going to write it together and then they're going to talk together. So we'll use those discussion protocols so that everyone has a chance to voice what they think about the writing. And this is a great way to use workspaces because this time, instead of doing a whole group workspace, I, depending on the size of my class, I'd probably put about four kids in each group. Um, and so we just, you know, set up some smaller groups and then they could take turns completing that, that paragraph about what makes a hero together. And so again, building some relationships, building some empathy, recognizing and celebrating differences. So some important SEL that's kind of built in around practicing writing and identifying the characteristics that we believe make a hero. Anything happening in the chat, Katie? I get nervous, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> uh, we did, Jerry just called out um, when we were looking at the uh, the pyramid, uh, the initial page wasn't uh, interactive, uh, but the, the next page was. So just a reminder, uh, Chris currently has the lesson in student pacing. Um, so you can scroll through, you can start uh, those pages that she has created into a workspace. You can start those um, at your own pace. And if she wanted to, she could snap back to teacher pace and bring you all back to the Bring you all to where I am, yep. And I think, you know, that's a great call out too, because Jerry, actually, Jerry and I think alike sometimes when it comes to lesson design. Uh, when I was looking at the glue file, I thought about taking the non-interactive pages out because I was like, could this be confusing? Um, and I decided to leave them in because they had some great directions on them, but, everything that's in Lumio in that content library is completely customizable. So if you felt that that didn't work for your flow, take that page out, put a different page in. Um, that's one of my favorite features here is you just have to figure out what, what is going to work in your classroom. All right. So pulling this kind of, you know, thing of heroes forward, what I want to do next is identify the heroes in fish in a tree. And I really do want my students to kind of start to make the connections of who do they relate to? Like, what do they see as a hero? What do they value? Because I think having that discussion about how we all look at the world a little bit differently is really important. And so, and builds that SEL. And at the same time also um, helps us have those classroom discussions. So here I've just grabbed another brainstorm. Nope, just kidding. I thought I grabbed a brainstorming web. I changed my mind. I did a shout it out. And so here, um, everybody's just going to kind of shout out like, who are the heroes? I've got this in anonymous mode. So we don't see student names and I've got it set. So everyone can have multiple answers because there are definitely multiple heroes in this book. And I want my students to be able to kind of throw that up. And then the next part of this activity is we start to group them. So we'll see some of the same names. And then we can start labeling this with, you know, who, what makes them a hero? What is their genius that made them a hero? What are the characteristics? And so we get plenty of practice walking through all of this. So you'll notice that, you know, we've been a little bit repetitive in how we've been doing these tasks. But again, when we're building self-efficacy, we want to let students practice. We want to let them practice alone. We want to let them practice together. We want to give them feedback so that they start to feel comfortable as we kind of build up to the culminating activity here. Um, and again, just letting them see things. Like one of the things I do really like about Shout It Out is if you're not sure as a student, you start to see things up there and you start to think, I agree with that. I don't agree with that. And so it really just allows you to borrow a little bit of the other students' knowledge to start to think about what you want to say um, and contribute here. So I love this. Um, I like putting the fun backgrounds in here. That's one of my favorite features that came in is being able to put the background that I want uh, and shout it out. So from here, I'm gonna move into a little bit of direct teaching that's set up to be asynchronous so that my students can take the time that they need to get the information that they need out of it. And so what this is leading to is a personal narrative where my students write about who their hero is, but I really wanna scaffold it and give them some practice and support along the way. And so what I've done is 
embedded a bunch of really handy YouTube videos and then kind of taken each video. So here's a chunk of two minutes and then given them a place to practice that and then given them another video and given them a place to practice that. So again, really letting them have that practice and kind of moving between what they're doing on their own and what they're doing with others. And you'll see we've got some goal setting in here in a minute as well. And so again, how do you brainstorm? So they can watch this. They can watch it as many times as they need to. They can stop it. They can pause it. They can just skip it because they feel like they might know this already. Um, I was that kid, as annoying as that was. So it's just set up to personalize things a little bit for them. And then I've got the brainstorming web. So right in here is where I have popped a brainstorming web in for them to start to kind of think about what they want to write about. Um, and again, with the student mode, they can jump back and forth and look at what they've done before they go on to the next activity. And I can give them some of that meaningful, actionable feedback as I see how they're progressing through each of these tasks. Then, you know, give them the next video. And this one is making a plan. I've got a graphic organizer in here for them to start to outline their plan. And then this is where the lesson for the most part is really going to start to move outside of Lumio because they're going to start actually writing. But before they do that, I want them to set some goals. And so kind of thinking about, obviously, we've been writing together. They know where they are with writing. They know where they need to make some improvements. And so I just get them to pick a goal for this lesson, the things that they need to do. And then when we're done, we'll come back and we'll reflect again on how well they met that goal. And I think it's important here, like if they didn't meet their goal, that's okay. Uh, we don't always meet all of our goals, but then we know how to iterate for the next goal and start to move forward. And I think this is a really important piece of that SEL component. It builds confidence. It builds efficacy belief. It helps our students start to navigate when things are hard and they don't go as planned. Um, and I know for, for my kid in particular, like having a plan for when the plan didn't work is kind of key to her feeling like she can accomplish things. And by kind of putting this goal setting in here, I definitely think that helps accomplish that. And then from there, my students will go out, they will write, um, the writing will likely take place in different places. But I think the part that I really want to do with them then is to reflect once they're done. And so thinking about all the ways we can do some peer writing, all the ways they can share that together. I think there's a ton of other activities that can be built into that. And then we come back at the end and we reflect. Um, and that kind of gives us a chance to, to see what they did well with, what, where they're really proud of themselves because they may have grown in this area. So developing that growth mindset, which, you know, Fish in a Tree is a great book for growth mindset, but thinking about, you know, how they're developing that and then the places where they still need help. And then, you know, potentially even popping in here some resources to, to help them with that, to give them that actionable feedback. So it was a lot in like 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> questions or thoughts from the chat, Katie, before we wrap up with everyone today? It's mostly excitement, Chris, in terms of like, hey, how did you do that feature? How do I do that? Is this page available? Um, so I think lots of, uh, lots of really good takeaways um, from that lesson. And as a reminder for everyone, we will send uh, the, the teacher share link to this lesson because it's super easy to share lessons with peers in Lumio. So we'll share this with all of you um, and we'll share a few other resources as well that are sort of tangential uh, to our conversation today. So you have uh, lots of things to reference and come back to. Exactly. Well, pretty quiet in the chat then. Um, this, you guys were a great audience. You gave us some great feedback in the chat. It is um, really exciting to be back with EdShift again. We will be back next month as well. So when you get, you'll get your follow-up email. It will come to the email address that you registered for the webinar with. Again, you'll get the presentation, you'll get the recording, you'll get the lesson, and we will send you the information on the upcoming dates for the webinar. And just in case you haven't checked out our podcast yet, we will um, have some information on where to find EdShift, the podcast and the fun stuff that's going on there. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Chris, for putting together such a great lesson to everyone who chimed in um, and lots of very nice notes coming through uh, in the chat as well. So thank you everyone for joining us today. <laughs>